1991 Chevy Cavalier with a 3.1 liter engine. We have a no start condition. We have good spark. I'm not gonna show that part. What I wanna show is the injector tests for this car. Uh, this car is known for sorted fuel injectors among other GMs that use the Maltec one injectors. So many different year make and model cars in the early, early uh, generation Maltec one injectors had sorted conditions. That's what we're dealing with with this car. And I wanted to start this video by showing what uh, a Noid light would look like connected. So right here in, in this uh, part of the picture, if you look closely, I have one of the injectors unplugged, one of the two injectors that I can actually get to, all the other injectors are under the manifold, uh, is I have a Noid light installed and what a Noid light should do is it should flash on and off as the engine's cranking which would give you an indication that the driver in the computer is functional and that you have a good power feed. So what you'd want to see with a Noid light installed is we should see a flashing Noid light. Go ahead and crank it. Keep cranking. All right. As you can see, that Noid light did not flash. So with a car that has good spark, which this one has, uh, and a Noid light that doesn't flash means that you have no injector pulse. We know a couple things. Number one, the crank sensor is good. If you got good spark, then you have to have a good crank sensor. This car only has one input and that's that crank sensor, so we wouldn't be worried about a crank sensor problem with no injection pulse because we have good spark. So our focus then becomes the power to the injectors or the computer itself. The computer controls the injectors. All right, what we're addressing is whether or not we have a power issue to the injector or we actually have no control from the computer. We have to address the power issue now before we go toward no control. Uh, the Noid light not flashing just tells you that you're missing one or the other and we need to address the power next. Unplug the Noid light, take a test light to battery ground, touch on the feed wire to the injector, make sure you have power, and it's not good enough to just do it with, with the key on. You wanna do it when you're cranking, loaded circuit, crank it. Okay, good. Notice the test light stayed lit the whole time I was cranking, so therefore that tells me that we have a good power feed and no control. Well, we're going after the computer now. And what we see by this right now the computer is not controlling these injectors based on what our Noid light shows. Now I could show another injector on the other side, um, but it's really not necessary because this system, all the injectors fire at the same time. There is one driver for the entire engine. This is a group fired injection system. And I know that there's some uh, argument on that based on the fact that there are two control wires as noted on this connector where I have my amp probe connected. There are two feeds, the pink wires, and there are two control wires, blue and green, blue for the front bank and green for the back bank. And if you look at a wiring diagram, those two wires go to the computer and so you think that you have a bank fire system, not a group fire, but that's not the case. These GMs they run those two wires together inside the computer with one injector driver. So, that being said, having no pulse on just this one back injector, we can be pretty confident that none of those injectors are firing. No spark, sorry, good spark, no injector pulse, that's where we're at. So, you see the limitations of the Noid light. What we wanna do now, we want to use an amp probe and a scope and monitor the waveform for these injectors and we're gonna do it per bank because we have two control wires. We have a blue wire and we have a green wire. The first one we're on is the green wire which is gonna be this back bank of three and I'm gonna to wanna to plug this Noid light, unplug the Noid light, plug the injector back in and see what kind of reading we have amperage wise on the back three fuel injectors. Okay, I'm looking at my scope, my settings for this. I'm set on a five amp scale, five amp plus and minus, and what we should have on a good bank of three on a group fire system like this 
you should have roughly 0.7 to 0.8 of an amp per injector. So we should have roughly 2.4 amps at the peak because all three of those would be firing at the same time on the back bank. And that's what we're looking for. That's why I picked a five amp scale, 20 millisecond screen. That should give me enough to see these pulses. In fact, what we could do for a cranking test initially is let's jack this up to a one second time base to get multiple pulses on the screen. We can zoom in later for detail. Go ahead and crank it. Keep cranking. As you can see, in this capture, there is no activity on here. On occasion, we're getting uh, a little bit of pulsing on the screen, but nothing like what we should have, which I told you should be about two and a half amps for a bank of three injectors. Basically, what we're looking at is exactly what the Noid light showed us, which is no injection pulse on this engine. All right, we're gonna do the other bank now. This will be the, the blue wire, which is gonna be the front bank, and we'll take a look at that. I'm going to move my amp probe to the other wire on this back injector harness connector. So I was on the green, I'm now going to the blue. And we're going to now measure this other bank. Alright, I'm monitoring the front bank of three now. It's the blue control wire and I'm using the same settings, 5 amp. I'm using a one second time base just to see the pulses on the screen initially. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, and as you can see in this picture, we are getting pulses that are over the scale. And so what I'm gonna wanna do now is I'm gonna change this to a higher amperage reading so we can actually get a number here. I'm gonna change this to a 20 amp now and I'm gonna drop my time base. I don't need to be at a one second. We're gonna miss some of that data at that long of a time base. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go a little bit lower because I want some detail here. Go ahead and crank it. All right, that's good. And we're gonna zoom here and take a look at this. And this is the pulsing of this system. And what you're looking at is clearly an injection pulse. And what you see is an amperage waveform. This thing is peaking over, let's get a number. This thing is peaking over 13 amps of current flow on one bank of three injectors. It should be peaking at about 2.4 amps. So here's what's happening. This bank of three in the front has a shorted injector. Could have multiple shorted injectors, we don't know. They're in a group and there's no way to isolate them with the intake manifold on. So what's happening, and the reason why this car is not starting, the computer has one driver that controls all these injectors, and what's happening is that driver is being overloaded by current flow from this one shorted injector, and what it's doing is it's limiting current flow to protect itself, and it's not even enough to light a Noid light on the other bank. So one shorted injector overloads the driver, so that one sorted injector doesn't fire and all the other five injectors, they don't fire either because the driver is not carrying enough current for those other ones. It's limiting it from this one sorted injector. What you don't wanna see on injector waveforms ever is a straight up line. You see a straight up line on anything that makes a magnetic field, that is a sorted winding. Injectors, coils, solenoids, same thing, no straight up lines. You want to have a ramp effect and that's due to the counter electromotive force of the building magnetic field where it actually generates voltage and counters the voltage coming in. That's why it should ramp. This car has shorted injectors. If you didn't have a scope, you would have put a computer in this car. If you didn't know about a shorted condition, good crank sensor, good spark, no injection pulse, good powers, good grounds. That's the process you would have gone through. What would you have done to this car? You would have put a computer in this car and the problem is you have a shorted injector and because all you have was a Noid light, this shows the necessity of knowing how to amp, low amp probe fuel injectors and get amperage waveforms.
There you go, sorted fuel injector. Okay, because I've been here before and I know which injector is sorted, we got lucky that it happened to be one that we could actually get to. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this one sorted injector in the front. Front injector is unplugged. That's my sorted injector. We're going to take a look at what this waveform looks like. So what we're going to have is two injectors firing in the front, three injectors firing in the back. So our amperage waveforms are going to be a little bit different. And uh, again, start the car. Let's see if it runs. It should start. As you can see, the car runs. One sorted injector. Keeping the whole car from starting. Let's go back and look at some amperage waveforms. Okay, this is the uh, this is the blue bank of, of three, but I'm, we're missing an injector. This is what it should look like. You should have a nice ramp. You should immediately ramp. You should never see a straight up line. Get a number peak. Alright. It's 1.46 amps at the peak right there. 1.46, that's low, why? Because we're missing one. 1 1.4, that'd be two injectors firing at about 0.7 a piece, like I said before. So the only thing wrong with that ramp is it's a little bit low because we're missing one injector. Let's look at the other bank now. Turn these curses off. This will be the other bank of three. I'm just gonna move the amp probe to the other wire. There's the other wire. What you notice, it's definitely higher. Here's, here's the problem though. On this other bank of three, you have the beginnings of a short that's occurring. One of those back three injectors is on its way out. So that's at least two injectors this car needs. The thing with these Maltex, when you run into shorted injectors, you replace them all. Why? Because they have this problem. This is the only systems you do this on. Multec 1 injectors, you find a shorted injector, you're going to change them all. Again, shut that off. Take a reading on this one just to give you a number comparison. And uh, what we're looking at at the peak of that. We're looking at a peak of about 2.5 amps. So 2.5 isn't bad for a peak. You're looking around 2.4 roughly, or 2.1 maybe, uh, if it was 0.7 a piece. So it's a little bit high, but the problem more than anything is this straight up line right here. You don't want to see that. That is a problem. That's the beginnings of another shorted injector. So Dead short up front, causing a no start condition, overloading the driver, unplug the one shorted injector. We got lucky because we were able to get to it. Car now starts, take your readings. You would have never caught that with an oil light. Um, you could at this point remove the intake and individually take resistance readings on all the injectors and only change the ones that you need. Uh, that is acceptable. Problem is two months, three months from now, you'll be pulling that intake off with another shorted injector. Maltec 1 injectors GM made, uh, 2.8, 3.1, uh, the 3400, the 2.2 Cavalier, uh, the 4.9 Cadillac engine, the 5.0 uh, Corvette and Camaro, the 5.7, all of those cars had this problem, shorted injectors and the Maltec 1s, and that would be from the the mid 80s all the way into the early 90s they used this before they changed to the Maltec 2s. GM Maltec 2 injectors, they didn't short out anymore, they just stuck mechanically so they, they never really built a good injector. So there you go. One last thing I want to show is the resistance check because a lot of people don't have a scope and you want to maybe another method to identify this condition and so what we're going to do is back there at that connector. I'm just gonna connect up an ohmmeter. I'm gonna show you how to do it and how you measure resistance on each bank of injectors.